Welcome to the John DeVito Show. It is Friday. I hope everyone is excited and ready for the weekend. We've been really fortunate here in Massachusetts where the weather has just been amazing. I mean, today was 75 degrees. You know, here we are at the end of October, and we don't normally get this type of weather at this type of year. And then now tomorrow, which is Saturday, they're saying the weather is going to be up around 80 degrees. So I am thrilled. I'm sure there are people out there that are worrying about climate change and all that. Not me. I'm going to be enjoying a beautiful 80-degree day today, and I'm not going to feel the least bit guilty about it. So I hope all of you that live in my area do the same. So, you know, today I want to talk about something that I was thinking about last night and again today. You know, the last, uh, I don't know, few days, week, there's a lot of serious stuff going on. We've got the situation in Gaza. We've got uh, the situation in Maine with the uh, person that uh, killed 18 people in a savage shooting. And, you know, we just have a lot of serious issues, the ongoing issues between Russia and Ukraine. And I was thinking about people today. I was thinking about the way people are, the way people interact. I'm thinking about the way younger people are in the world today. And I'm thinking about, you know, when I grew up, again, I've talked about it, I'm 55 years old. And, you know, I grew up in the 1970s, 1980s. <clears throat> That's when I was in school. And really, you know, what was different during those times that made the world a different place? Now, I think about the way children experience the world today. And it's a lot different than the way I experience the world. And when you think about, you know, what children have to navigate on a daily basis, you know, it's uh, social media, the many different types that they're on. I mean, there's Snapchat, Instagram, you know, they don't really touch Facebook, but, you know, things like uh, TikTok, whatever else, Rumble, there's a lot of different sites that they're on. And there, there's so much information coming into them all the time. I mean, then when you uh, put on top of that things like Netflix and YouTube and all the other channels in which we can gather information, there's so much information that's brought into us every day. I mean, it's like we're on full speed all the time. And when you think about the young people, <clears throat> you know, some of the messages are good. Some of the things you get on the Internet and, you know, on different apps is good. But then other stuff you get is not so good. And then some of the stuff you get is just plain evil. And I think about all the different platforms. And so again, it's thinking about all the different uh, apps and information that children right now can take in. It's so much more than I took in as a kid. Now, I think back on my childhood. <clears throat> all right, let's take a step back to the 1970s. And, you know, the 1970s was a lot different than it was now. And for people that did not live in the 1970s, like, I can't speak on the 1950s because I didn't live in the 1950s. I basically learned about the 1950s, you know, from what my parents told me and from what I see on television in old TV shows from the 1950s. But when I, when I think about growing up in the 1970s, the world was a different place. I mean, women were not as advanced as men in their careers. Um, men were the sole breadwinners for the most part in their families. Um, you know, children did not dare talk back to the parents or talk back to teachers because there was a respect. And part of the respect was you knew that when you were, if you, if you mouthed off to a teacher and you got a call from the principal, you were definitely going to get punished. And in a lot of homes, you would get a slap across the face. You would get the belt. You would get punished severely. And that was an accepted form of parenting in the 1970s, at least, I guess, at least in my home it was. So maybe it wasn't everywhere else, and I was just, you know, the child that grew up that way. But I don't think that's the case. I think that most children grew up in a home where there were strict consequences for what you did. Now, also, when you look at what children were exposed to in the 1970s as compared to today, it was vastly different. In the 1970s, growing up as a kid, this is before cable television. This is before, you know, 10,000 movie channels. This is before the internet. 
I mean, basically, our forms of communication were the landline that we had in our home, the television that we had, and at that point, you had three major channels. You had NBC, CBS, and ABC. So in my house, it was channels four, five, and seven. We also had Fox at a certain point, which was channel 25. And then we had WLVI TV 56. And that was, and also we had, I think in Boston, WSBK uh, TV 38. That's where I could watch the Red Sox as a young kid. Eventually, we had another channel, uh, TV 68. So during the course of a day, most homes had one television. I, I think at some point I got a television in my room, but I was probably a teenager. But we had one family TV, and the TV was not on all day and all night. And we didn't have 800 channels to choose from. And the stuff that was on the major networks back in the 1970s was you know, very clean. There, there were no sex scenes. There was no swearing. There was no any of the stuff that you see now, even on the network channels, because there was a lot stricter code of decency, I guess, through the powers that be that managed what was broadcast on television. So we had one TV, and the only time I could really watch TV on my own was if I got home from school, say at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they had a Channel 56, Dale Dorman would have cartoons, for a few hours before dad got home from work. So if I had no friends to play with that particular day, or I was just tired, I would sit home and watch a couple hours of cartoons, things like the Flintstones, the Jetsons, you know, Gilligan's Island, the Brady Bunch, shows like that. And then the other time in which I could probably watch television was early on Saturday morning. They had Saturday morning cartoons. So my parents would sleep in. I always get up early. So I was up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I could watch all these different cartoons that came on in the morning. But they were all wholesome cartoons. Nothing that like that's out there today. When it came to what we watched on television, aside from the cartoons, we had shows like Little House on the Prairie. We had The Waltons. We had uh, The Brady Bunch, The Partridge Family. I didn't really like that show, but we had it. Uh, we had all these shows. You know, Even Gilligan's Island. It was a stupid TV show. It was funny. And, uh, you know, there were really no serious themes. But really, the only areas in which I was flooded with information was when I watched cartoons, when I watched one of the shows that I liked. You know, Little House on the Prairie, Walton's, uh, Dukes of Hazzard, you know, all those shows from back in the day. They were all wholesome shows where you didn't see violence. You didn't see constant sex. You didn't hear swears. And back then, also, we didn't have the internet. So I couldn't get on and search, you know, for videos of people dying. I couldn't get on and search about serial killers. I couldn't get on and search about different sinister things that younger kids can see today. On top of it, you know, I did not have the access to get on the internet and search for porn. Right now, any kid with the click of a thumb can search and find any type of porn they want for free on the internet. These are all things that we did not have to deal with back when we were kids in the 1970s. Now, when you think of the violence, think of the violence in television. Think of the violence in movies. Think of the violence in video games. Now, I'm not saying that these things cause violence, but think of the number of incidents of violence a 13-year-old kid may see today in 2023, by the time he's 13, as opposed to someone in 1973 who was 13. I mean, you just didn't see violence back then. And proof of that is if you go back and look at like one of the old horror movies, like if you see the original Friday the 13th or the original Halloween, I mean, there was very little blood. You didn't see the killing. And back in those days, you were terrified by those movies because they were so just graphic. But when you go back and watch them today, they're nothing. They're nothing. But I mean, back in those days, it was shocking to see that. Today, you wouldn't even think anything of it. It's boring and it's just, it's not even, it doesn't even compare with the level of sex and violence and different things we see on television right now. So I've always said that, you know, people say, well, you know, movies don't cause people to be violent. Video games don't cause people to be violent. And that's probably true with most people. But there are probably some people 
that maybe aren't completely straight, you know, in the head right now that see some of these things and they eventually end up committing acts of violence because of the influence these things have. So people will say, well, that's crazy. Um, you know, movies don't influence people. TikTok doesn't it, it influence people. Of course, now there's a job called influencer. I'm sure we've all heard that term. But if television and other forms of multimedia and media do not in influence people, then why are companies spending hundreds of millions of dollars on advertising? Why do we now have paid influencers that are getting on and saying that they, you know, wear a certain type of uh, shoes that you should wear those because they wear them? And I mean, obviously, media influences the way people think. So in the 1970s, 1980s, you had more wholesome shows. You had more wholesome things. You did not have millions of different pieces of information coming at you every day. So what I did as a kid, there were times when I came home in the afternoon and I, you know, maybe um, watched some cartoons. But most days after school, especially in the summer, I did not sit home in front of the television all day and all night. I did not sit in front of my computer searching YouTube videos all day and all night. I did not sit on my phone all the time just searching videos and texting. I wasn't playing video games all day. I was going out. I was living my life. I was interacting with friends. I was riding my bike around town. You know, my, my mother would tell me, you know, if I was leaving in the morning, all right, come home for lunch. Then you can come to go back out and make sure you're home by dinner. And we did it. You know, our mothers didn't have to text us 400 times a day. They didn't put trackers on our phones because we didn't have phones. And, you know, I, I found a way to survive my childhood like all of my friends did. And I think about how wholesome things were back then. I mean, not everything was perfect. You know, if you went out and got into trouble and someone called your father and told you, you might be coming home for a beating. But back then, you had a respect. You knew that when you were out in the town, you were representing your family. And if you did the wrong thing, your parents were going to find out. And your ass, as we used to say back then, your ass was grass. So... I don't know. You know, is it better today in 2023 than it was in 1973? I mean, I think race relations are better. I think that it's better in 2023 where people can be who they are um, as far as sexuality. I think that it's better that women have a lot more equal rights than they had, most likely had in 1973. I was young. So I didn't really pay a lot of attention to it as a young kid, and that's just the way the world was. So there are things that are better, but when you think about even you know people being able to be who they are sexually, it's a good thing. I mean, I really believe that, and I know there are going to be Republicans out there that disagree with me, but I am a Republican that believes that people are born with who they are, and you know some make choices, but some people do not. Just like I never made the choice to like women, it just happened. And I think it's very much that way for people of the LGBTQ plus uh, community as well. So I want to make it clear that this is not any type of slam on that community because I don't think that way. But when I think back in the 1970s, what people did in the bedroom, we didn't talk about it. I mean, if you were married or if you had a girlfriend and you were having sex, you didn't talk about it. If you were gay and you were, you know, dating another person of the same sex. It was something that was private. It was, it was, it was believed back then that what happened in the bedroom is meant to be private between you and the person that's in the bedroom, and it's not something that you talk about in public. It's not decent. And I, you know, I agree. I mean, I, I hear about movie stars' sex lives. I don't care. I don't care who they're having sex with, and really, it's none of my business. And they should be advertising it everywhere because it really is just not something, in my opinion, that needs to be talked about. It needs to be advertised. So I don't get that. I really don't. The fascination today of telling everything to everybody. But back in the day, you know, that wasn't the case. I think sex was private. Um, as far as relations between black people and white people back in the 1970s, I mean, I, I grew up in New Hampshire. There were only a couple of black families that I knew growing up, but I don't think there was this massive level of disrespect 
from white people to black people and black people to white people back in the 1970s. I mean, I think a lot of times it was kind of people lived in separate communities, but I don't think there was the blatant racism all the time that we hear about today where people believe that was the case back then, because I don't remember that. Now, I'm not saying in some cases it isn't true. So if you had a bad, you know, bad experience racially, and, you know, if you're a black man or a black woman, you might view this a lot differently than I do. So if that's the case, I apologize, and I don't mean to diminish what you think of the situation. But I don't know. I, I look at the world today. I look at the mess we're in. I look at the anxiety levels of the people on the planet. I look at the anxiety present children. You know, children have it really tough today. I mean, they've got to, girls have to look at TikTok and see all these beautiful models dressing half naked with all their makeup on. And they feel like they need to be that. They're Instagram influences with millions of followers. I think of that girl, Libby Dunn. If you don't know who that is, look her up. She's a gymnast at LSU and she's a college student. She's beautiful, you know, cute young woman, very pretty, athletic. Um, but she has millions of followers, followers and is making $3 million a year because she posts cute videos of herself on the internet. So all the younger girls that are seeing this, they all want to be Libby Dunn. So you've got these young girls now that when they're going into school, going out in public, they're dressing half naked all the time. They've got the yoga pants on, two sizes too small, half shirts, all these different type of things. Now, I'm not saying girls don't have the right to dress however they want. They do. And my opinion really doesn't matter when it comes down to it. But all I'm pointing out is between 2023 and 1973, it was a lot different. I mean, again, women did not have equal rights then. They really didn't. So that's part of it. However, but you had women that were dressing in sweaters and nice outfits. And they weren't revealing everything they had to everybody that wanted to look. Now, there's nothing wrong with someone if they want to do that. If that if that makes you feel good, I'm one that believes in doing things that make you happy in your life. But if a girl is choosing to do that out of her own thought process and free will, that's great. But if there are a lot of younger girls who have poor self-images and they feel like they need to be this famous person on TikTok or Instagram, it's affect, affecting their emotional state. So, you know, there's so many things to talk about, and I'm going to stick to my rule and keep this around 20 minutes. I'm at 1750 right now because I could probably talk about this for an hour. But I don't know. When, when I think about the world I see today compared to the world I see, I saw in 1973, maybe it was just I was seeing the world through the eyes of a boy. So maybe it was innocent eyes not seeing the bad things in the world at that point in my life. But even when I think back on that world today, I think back on the way the world was. And I do think while it wasn't perfect, a lot of the things that we had back then were better than they are today. And I know for the young people, you might think that I'm out of touch. And maybe I am. I mean, I'm 55 years old now. Maybe I am out of touch. But the world and people haven't changed all that much. The technology is obviously more advanced right now. Uh, there's so much information all the time. But I think people today, even though there's all these forms of social media and different ways to connect, I think people now are more disconnected than they've ever been. And I think it's affecting people's mental health. So I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. But I'm thinking about all the serious things that are happening in the world right now. And I think it's important for all of us to remember. With all the technology we have, we don't need to be plugged in all the time. I'd love to see more people leaving their phones at home. If you go into a restaurant, leave your phone in the car. You don't need to check your email 20 times during dinner. The emails will be there when you get out. You know, if you're going to do a movie, leave your phone in the car. If you're home with your family having dinner, put the phones on the charger and sit down and talk as a family and disconnect from the information because I think the information becomes addictive. But when we take in too much information, I think it's also causing depression, anxiety, and many of the effects that we see in the world today. So that's just my take on it. I wanted to talk about this today. I was thinking about it quite a bit. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And like I said, at the end of most of my 20 minute podcasts, I can't thank you guys enough for listening. I really can't. It's humbling 
to see the number of downloads I'm getting right now. Um, and to think that there's people all across the country and all across the world that are listening to my voice is pretty amazing. And just know, you know, you don't know who I am. I don't make any money off of doing this. So I'm doing this because I want to do it. I'm not profiting off this. This is not my job. I'm not some high paid podcaster. And I'm sure that's probably obvious when you listen to my shows, but I'm just a guy with a podcast speaking about things that mean something to me. And hopefully I'm connecting with some of you out there. So for all of you, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Take care of yourselves. And thank you so much for tuning in to the John DeVito show. I love all of you and God bless you.